What's up guys, Justin here with the Blender Essentials. So we're gonna be starting off this series creating simple shapes inside of Blender. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna start by creating a wine glass using a cylinder inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna make a wine glass that looks something like this. And notice that I'm currently using Blender version 2.82. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna come into our model and we're gonna start by making sure that we're in object mode and hitting Shift A in order to insert a shape. So in this case, I'm gonna insert a cylinder. And so the cylinder most closely matches the wine glass shape, and so we're just gonna build on top of that. And so the way that we're gonna do this is you're gonna notice right now that what this has is this has a subdivision surface modifier applied to it. And what that means is that means in the initial geometry, if we were to look at this by tapping the tab key, looks something like this. So it's more simple geometry. I know there's probably some better things we could do with the edge loops here, but for right now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make something kind of like this. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our cylinder. So I'm gonna start by scaling this up. So I'm just gonna select this, tapping the S key and tapping the Z key in order to scale this up. And I'm gonna scale this to kind of the same size as my uh, wine glass over here. And then I'm gonna move this up just so that they're sort of aligned. So once they're sort of aligned, what we wanna do is we wanna select this and we wanna go into edit mode. So either by coming up here and clicking on this or by hitting the tab key to move over there. And so you're gonna notice right now, we don't really have a whole lot to do in here. So if we were to like select all of this, for example, and scale it out, you can see how we don't really have a wine glass shape. And so what we need to do is we need to start by adding some edge loops. And so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna add edge loops by tapping the Control R key. So we've got the selected and we wanna type in Control R and then you can see how I can scroll my mouse up in order to adjust the number of subdivisions that we add in here or edge loops that we add in here. And so when we do this, you can see how as I scroll my mouse up, I'm getting more and more of these. And so what I'm gonna do is if you look at this shape right here, you can see that the shape generally changes from here to here maybe from here to here and then here to here. And so what we want is we basically want our edge loops to align with the places where our with the places where our shape really kind of changes. And we can add more in the future too, so you don't need to add too many edge loops. Maybe I'm gonna do something like this, but you can see as I scroll my mouse wheel up and down, this is adding or removing the edge loop. So I'm just gonna single click. Notice when I single click, this is gonna let me move these around. In this case, I'm just gonna right click in order to set those in place. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start editing these edge loops. So the way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna tap the Z key and go into wireframe mode. So that just allows me to see all the vertices a little bit better. But what I wanna do is I wanna start off and I wanna select this edge loop. So we wanna make sure that we are in edge select mode. I'm just gonna hold the Alt key and click on this, what this does is this allows me to select the entire edge loop based on that. Well now I can move that up and down using the move tool. I can also use the scale tool in order to scale it in or out. And so one thing I don't want this to do is I don't want this to move up or down. So I'm just gonna type in shift Z. So these are just scaling along the X and Y axes like this. And one thing you can do if you want to is you can go into a front view mode either by clicking on this button right here or by tapping the one on your numpad. And then it's real easy to scale these in or out. And so I'm just gonna type the S key. And for this one, for right now, I'm gonna kinda leave it as is and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna select the next one. So I'm gonna go up to the next one, hold the Alt key and click on this and I'm gonna drag this down and then I'm gonna scale it in. So I'm gonna scale it in kinda like this. So just so that this kind of angles up to this point. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing with this edge loop. And I can move this up and down using the move tool. But what I wanna do in this situation is I also wanna scale this one in. So when I scale this one in, and you're gonna to have to think about the way you want this to go. If you want this to taper in, taper out, be kind of level, that's kind of up to you. I'm gonna maybe select this so that it's at this point right here. So you can see how I'm just scaling these by selecting the edge loops and tapping the S key. So. Select this one. We're gonna scale this out just a bit. We'll do an alt click, scale this one out. This will probably be our widest point. 
Then we'll do an alt click and select this one and scale it. Maybe just a bit right here. And then we'll do an alt click on this one. And I'm going to move it up to kind of align with this wine glass. And you can scale that in or out as well. This all it just kind of depends on what you want the shape of this wine glass to look like. So now we've got our wine glass in here. But the problem is if we uh, hold the Z key and click back on solid. And look at this. It's not hollow yet. So we need this to be hollowed out because a wine glass is basically a piece of glass that's thickened along here. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to hold the Alt key and click on this edge loop. But then in this case, we're going to type in E for extrude, but then S for scale. And so what that's going to do, and there's probably another way you could do this as well. For what we're doing right here, we're going to kind of do these manually. You could also probably use like a, like a solidify modifier or something like that. But for this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to extrude this in. And then we're going to go back to our front view, go back to wireframe, so Z, and then click on wireframe. Then we're going to type the E key in order to extrude this. So you can see how what I can do is when I tap the E key and move my mouse up or down, I can extrude this along this axis, then I can just scale this in or out just by moving my mouse. So in this case, I've scaled that. I'm gonna type the E key again, type the S key to scale it out again, trying to kind of maintain that same uniform thickness. And then I'm gonna type the E key again in order to extrude this down again. We're going to scale this back in. And you can move this up or down a little bit to align it if you want to. And then we're going to extrude it one more time. Inward like this. And so now if you look at this, if we were to turn solid mode back on, you can see how we have basically a thickened wine glass shape. And so one of the things about this though is it's not very smooth. And so what we want to do is we want to select this object. Um, so I'm going to tap A to select everything. And we're going to add a modifier to this. So the modifier is going to be what's known as the subdivision modifier. Basically what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to subdivide this shape so that everything gets smoother. So we're just going to go to add modifier, look for subdivision surface, and click on that. And so one thing you're going to notice when you do this is you now have your wireframe so you can see your actual topology in here as well as you've got a shape that's um, as well as a shape that's a lot smoother. So if you tap the tab key to go back to object mode, you can see this a little bit better. And notice that you can adjust your number of subdivisions in here using this modifier. So you can see how the more we do this, the smoother it gets. And notice that the more you do this, the harder this is going to be on your performance. So just be kind of careful when you're doing this. But I'm just going to tap the tab key to go back to edit mode. And so you can see how this is too thick along the inside. So what I'm going to do with that is first of all, I'm going to go into my modifier. I'm going to click on the button for display modifier and viewport so that I don't see that anymore. I basically want to hide that. Then I'm also going to tap the Z key, go to wireframe mode. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to tap the Alt key and select this edge loop and I'm going to move this up. So I'm going to move this up to about this point right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Control R. I'm going to add another edge loop. And notice that in this case, this allows me to slide this up and down once I click. So when I do a Control R, you can see how this lets me add an edge loop right here. I can single click, then move my mouse up and click right here. And I'm going to go ahead and scale that in just a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to adjust the way that this subdivision modifier works so that instead of this having this big wide curve right here, it's really going to kind of minimize that because we've added this extra loop in here. So then if I click back on this, type the Z key, then go back to solid mode, and I'm going to type tab in order to get back to this view. You can see how this is now longer instead of being super wide. And so the other thing I want to do is I want to adjust the base of this object because right now what's happening, if we go back into edit mode, is if we zoom in on this, 
This is subdividing this whole thing so that it's very thin. So it's basically splitting this in half. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna add a couple different edge loops in here as well. So if I type in Control R and then scroll my mouse up maybe so that I have three edge loops in here, you can see I can kind of move these up and down and this changes the way that subdivision modifier makes this shape look. So what we can do in this situation is I'm gonna do an alt click in order to select this edge loop and I'm gonna move it up. And then down here, I'm gonna do an alt click and move this one down. And notice what's the, what that's doing to the subdivision of this shape. So the higher up this is, the more curved the shape is. The less high up this is, the less curved the shape is. And I'm also gonna do an alt click and I'm gonna scale this one out a little bit. So just like this. And so one thing I don't like about this is the way the topology is created on the inside here. So what I might do is I might do an alt click to select this loop, maybe just scale it in, maybe move it up just a little bit. And this circle in the middle is not very good topology. I'm kind of going to leave that alone for this video um, because we're going to look at this from the outside, so it's not that big of a deal. But now, if I type the tab key and then zoom in, you can see how this subdivision surface modifier is making this nice smooth wine glass inside a blender. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, what I'd like to do with this series is create a series of different uh, videos where we just talk about some simple shapes that you can create inside a blender. It's kind of a step-by-step -step getting started. So look for more of those in the future. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought, if this was helpful to you, if there's things you'd change about this workflow. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new blender tutorials every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.